How many people waste their lives? The wastage. How many people waste their beauty? The wastage. How many people waste their time? Their talent. How many people waste all their effort, all their ability? The wastage and the passing away of their goodliness. That's why it says in James chapter 1, verse 11, it says, For the sun is no sooner risen, but a burning heat, but it withers the grass. All the things that you know, the, the, the store in a secret place, and they say, I'm going to enjoy that for many years to come. All of a sudden, death knocks at their door. As they are saying, my soul, take your ease, eat, and drink. Because he had so much possession. Then the Lord said, thou fool, this night your soul will be required of you and whose will all these things be that you have gathered together so you see that is rich in the things of this world and is not rich in grace it's not rich towards god it's not rich in godliness all he has all he can point to is the grass that Fadeth away. And it says, For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace, the goodness, and the beauty, and the pleasure of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man. The rich man who does not know God, the rich man has position on earth, does not have a place in heaven. So shall also the rich man fade away in his ways. I pray you will not be like that. I will not be like that. And look at Luke chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 16, Luke chapter 12. Verse 16, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Plentifully. That's what hinders some people. They cannot come to study the Bible with us once a week like this, because the ground of that rich man has brought forth plentifully that's what happens to some people they've got one degree they, they, they are running for another degree they've got one doctorate they're running for another doctorate that's why they cannot study the bible the ground of a rich man brought forth plentifully that's why some people cannot give themselves to learning the word of god because they have an award here they have another award there and people are calling them here and all that they're running after all those things are like the grass that fades away and when death comes and when the unexpected comes they leave all those things and they go to a lost eternity look at verse 17 in verse 17 and he thought within himself saying what shall i do because i have no room where to bestow my fruits the fruits are so many the fruits of learning the fruits of working the fruit of earning, the fruit of amassing, and the fruit of just gathering and gathering and gathering, they have no time. They can reach a hundred books in a year. They have a goal. I read two books every week. And I, you know, I have to do that. I read on business. I read on finance. I read on human relationships. I read on this. I read on that. They have no time to read the one single book that will determine their destiny. The one single book that will pave way for them in eternity. But they read and read and read. They labor and labor. They study and study. They work and they work. And there is no time to do the work that the Lord will reward them for in eternity. All the work they're doing is what will perish at the end of their day. And he thought within himself, saying, 
what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits look at verse 18 in verse 18 then he said this will I do is a man of planning it's not planning for heaven is planning for the harvest on earth. It's a man of uh, thinking. He's not thinking of heaven. He's thinking of what he has here on earth. It's a man of uh, activity, a purposeful activity. But the purpose is only for the things of this world. Think about your life. What do you plan for? What do you aim at? What are you running after? And what do you spend your night thinking and working on? Well, all those things might be good temporarily. Are you thinking about heaven? Are you thinking about holiness? Are you thinking about the grace of God that should increase in your life and take you on to heaven when you die? This man had no thought of grace, no thought of God, no thought of godliness, and no thought of going to the great beyond to be with the Lord when he dies. He says, this will I do. I will pull down my pants and build greater i'll get you know better engineers that constructed this other one and now we're going to have a better place to store everything that i'm there will i bestow all my fruits and my goods then in verse 19 and i will say to my soul he knew that he had a soul but he didn't make any room for that soul, any forgiveness for that soul, any salvation for that soul, any cleansing for that soul, any preparation for that soul to be with God in eternity. All he could say to the soul, I have these material things. Now look at what he said. He said, thou hast much goods laid up for many years man how do you know you have many years i have a health plan i do medical tests every time and i make sure that i am fit and whatever i tell them the money is there and whatever health i need you people put your heads together and put your research together and give me the most modern a solution to my health challenge and because he thought he had everything made he said i have much goods but laid off for many years take thine ease eat drink and be merry verse 20 now god has the final say i was waiting for an amen there amen. on the people of the world god has the final say on the people who think is there God is there no God never mind God has the final say on the people who kill themselves on projects 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 God has the final say on the people who are running and running after the things of this world God has the final say on the thoughtless they are not thinking where would they spend eternity god has the final say but god said unto him thou fool this night you was thinking of many years this night thy soul shall be required of thee then who shall those things be which thou hast provided look at verse 21 in verse 21 so is he that lays up treasure for himself for himself for himself and there's some so-called believers too they don't think of the bible they learn doctrine. The doctrine is in the head. It doesn't come to the heart. They're stacking away money. Money here in their country. 
money there overseas money everywhere and there is need there's need of preaching the gospel there's need of helping your neighbor there is need of be whatever needs to be done so that more souls will come into the kingdom uh -uh. they don't think of that money 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 they stack it away over there and the thing is uh, growing and expanding and they don't think they don't think, even those who are getting older and older and older, they don't think that when death comes, they leave all those riches suddenly. And whose will those things be that they are provided for themselves? They're not rich towards God. There are people, they hear about the rapture. The rapture can take place and you say, give me the next word. They say, anytime. They know that in their head. They don't know that in their heart. All the money you stack in all the banks and everywhere, you will not touch it. Even when your wife is sick, you will not touch it. Even when the children need this and that, you want that thing to reach a million. I want to be a millionaire. You want that thing to reach a billion. I want to be a billionaire. If Christ comes at any time, if the rapture takes place at any time, you're not going to take the billions away to heaven if you're able to make it at all because you will not take it away when the rapture comes at any time. Who will spend it? It will be in the hand of the Antichrist after you are gone. If you go, if you don't go, if the rapture takes place and you remain here, all that money is there in the bank, it's there everywhere. I store it and I take shares, shares there, shares there. If you don't make the rapture, even that money you cannot spend freely because you have to take the mark of the Antichrist before you can buy or sell. And if you take the mark of the Antichrist, with all your money, whatever you buy, whatever you sell, you're doomed and damned and condemned forever. This is the reason we need to think and we need to understand that the goodness of the rich people, if they don't have God, if they are God and they forget God and they are running after riches, so is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, the profitable perseverance of believers while enduring temptations. We're looking at James chapter 1. We're looking at verse 12, the first part of verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that receives temptation. Blessed is the man that still stands firm and still holds himself up over under the pressure of temptation. We're looking at three things here. Number one, resisting the tempter with the sword of the world. Number two, refusing appealing temptations in supplication with willingness. Number three, rejecting attractive temptations with the steadfastness of the warrior. Look at number one. Number one, resisting the tempter with the sword of the world. The devil is the tempter and he was so audacious that he could even come to Christ and tempt Christ. And he, a tempter, the tempter, will tempt Christ. We Christians, who do we think we are, that the devil will not tempt us, no matter how high, no matter how much exposed, no matter how intelligent, and no matter how strong you think you are, if Christ was tempted, you cannot escape being tempted. But God give you the grace to say no. God give me the grace to say no. They give us the grace in Jesus' name. 
he tempted Eve and tempted Adam. And if he was so courageous, so daring to test the first man that did not have seen in his life, the first woman that did not have seen in her nature, if he was so daring, how do we think that today he'll just leave us alone? It's the tempter, and he doesn't have respect or honor for anyone. He brings temptation, and it is ours to understand temptation will come. It may not come in the direction you are thinking. So if you're looking at one direction, Satan, the tempter, does not concentrate only on one direction in temptation. He has a thousand and one ways in which he brings temptation. And it is ours to understand that the grace of God is available. Whatever direction it comes from, you will overcome. We're looking at Matthew chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he calls him by the right title. The tempter is the devil, is Satan, is Lucifer, is the prince of this world, is the god of this world. Now he came as a tempter. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. The Lord Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. He was now hungry. The devil will bring temptation from the direction of what you are hungry for. If you are hungry for power, he will bring temptation that way. If you are hungry for position, he'll bring temptation from that way. If you are hungry for money, he'll bring your temptation that way. If you are hungry for the pleasure of the flesh, he'll bring temptation that way. If you are hungry for popularity, he'll bring temptation from that area. If you are hungry for knowledge, 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 and you are crying after the knowledge of this world, world he'll bring the temptation from that area and when he came he said if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread look at verse 4 in verse 4 but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God. When you know the word and you know that you live by the word, the word of promise, you live by that word. The word of power, you live by that word. The word of prophecy, you live by that word. The word of his proclamation, you live by that word. When you live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, you can easily throw the sword at the tempter. He'll flee away from you in Jesus name we're looking at verse 5 in verse 5 then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple verse 6 in verse 6 and said unto him if thou be the son of God cast thyself down for it is written okay and Jesus quoted the Bible at him and he said I know the Bible too Satan knows the Bible Although he will twist it, he will turn it upside down, he will take something out of the word, he will add something to the word, and if you don't know the word in reality, he'll easily deceive you. It's just like sometimes you meet some of these people outside and they're not born again, but they can quote the Bible, although they quote it wrongly, but they still quote the Bible. The tempters and the followers of the tempters in our places of work, in our marketplace, in our community, even in our extended families, when they want us to do something and we're saying no, and they say, but why? The Bible says, and then they bring out a word 
don't listen to them don't be deceived because of their misquotation of the bible and so the devil said that for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands shall they bear thee up lest thou dash thy foot against a stone look at verse 7 verse 7 Jesus said unto him understand Jesus the light of the world he quotes the bible from the angle of being the light of the world and satan is uh, the devil and is the prince of the power of darkness he quotes the bible from the angle of darkness it's in darkness he doesn't have grace he doesn't have godliness he doesn't have the gospel all he can do is quote you know the bible out of context out in darkness but because jesus is the light the light of the word came and jesus said it is written again thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says again the devil he will not give up so quickly if you overcome one temptation don't think that is so everything is finished now no he may come back again maybe that day maybe another day maybe another week and he'll come from another angle again the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them Jesus will be the king of kings. Amen. And the Lord of lords. The kingdoms of this world will soon become the kingdom of our God and his Christ. Jesus knew all those things belonged to him. But the devil wanted him to take the kingdoms from him the devil not from the father god in heaven maybe there are some things that legitimately belong to you and the lord has promised you and you know you are going to have yes you will have you will have but before that point of possession the devil may come and offer it to you don't make the mistake and say after all the Lord has promised me, and I know it will be mine. And even if it comes from an idol worshiper, even if I have uh, to, you know, bow down to them before I have no problem. Uh, there's problem. There is problem. What God intends to give, you must not get from the devil it says over here the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them look at the next verse verse 9 and says unto him all these things will i give thee if you're looking for you know prosperity at any cost money at any cost wife at any cost children at any cost property at any cost if you want it so seriously and so definitely that you say i'll pay any price you may pay the price with your soul with your eternity you may pay that price with your destiny the thing is leave it in the hands of god and let god give at the time he wants to give it says and he said to him all these things will i give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me verse 10 in verse 10 then said jesus unto him Get thee hence. Get out of my way. I thought you would say that. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is reaching. Jesus 
always urge the reaching one. And he knew that it will be accomplished as it has been reaching. It is reaching. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Yeah. You resist the devil, he will flee from you. We're looking at number two. Number two, we're looking at refusing appealing temptations in supplication with willingness. Supplication with willingness. Supplication is prayer. The willingness is really, you don't want to fall into that temptation. Really. You desire that the grace of God remain in your life and the pleasure of the flesh. The pleasure of things present will not cloud your vision, will not take heaven away from you. And so you have the willingness when you pray. If you are praying and God knows you don't have the willingness, you are wasting God's time. He will not allow you to waste his time. You are praying. You want to overcome. You are praying. You want to have the power to receive. You, you are praying. You want to be free from all the snares of the devil. If you are willing, it will be so. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing because your spirit knows the consequence of falling into temptation. The spirit is willing because you're saved, you're born again, you're giving yourself to the Lord. And the spirit says, isn't it a good thing to remain and abide as a member of the family of God? The spirit is willing. The spirit is willing. I'll make you officials of men. You know the promise you're given. And you know, if you're going to achieve, if you're going to possess the fulfillment of the promise, you you have to remain with him. The spirit is willing because you know without holiness no man shall see the Lord. But now the flesh is weak. The flesh is not, not at the same level as the spirit. The flesh desires these things that the flesh contacts in the world. The spirit is for heaven. But the flesh is looking for what is pleasing in the world. And because of that gap between the spirit and the flesh, that's why you are there in prayer. You see, the flesh must come to the same level, to the same position, to the same desire as my spirit. And when you do that, and your flesh comes to that same level, at the willing spirit, that's when you overcome easily. You will overcome. I will overcome. When we refuse those appealing temptations, we'll overcome in Jesus' name. Look at number three. Number three, we're looking at rejecting attractive temptations with steadfastness as a warrior, as a soldier. Because if we don't resist and if we don't act like a warrior, all those things may draw us. Look at Luke chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 13. Luke chapter 8, verse 13 day on the rock a day which when they hear receive the word of joy and these have no root which for a while believe for a while believe and then it says and in time of temptation they fall away for a while they believe, and while they believe during that time, they are not making their soul, they are not making their mind to concentrate on the Lord and to be strengthened in the Lord. 
and to prepare for the evil day of temptation that might come. And when the temptation comes, the jolly good Christians, they come to church, they go back home, everything is fine. It's like they are walking in the air, but now temptation comes suddenly. And they do not have the roots. They are not grounded so that they will overcome. That will not happen to you. You will overcome in Jesus' name. He tells us in verse 14, in verse 14, and that which fell amongst us are they which when they have heard, they go forth and are choked for the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. The people that do not get themselves grounded, established in the word, that they're just like here and there, and the winds can easily blow them off their feet, that because of the cares of this life, cares of this life, cares of this life, and the deceitfulness of riches. You know, there, somebody is bringing something to them. You know, this deal, this one will go through. This one is not like all those people that come to deceive you. This one, if you put in this amount, it will double. I'm telling you, in two weeks, you are going to have this. And because they have the deceitfulness of riches bugging them, they have the deceitfulness of riches following after them they fall into it and they lose everything they've got they gamble with everything they've got they might even gamble with their souls the prince of the power of the air sends his emissaries to them come into covenant if you come to this covenant you know in life this is where you'll be and that's what you'll be and because of the deceitfulness of their own ambition they fall into that they fall into temptation and then they realize they've sold their heart to the devil and then it says because of the pleasures of this life pleasures of this life would you be surprised some people that say they are born again? The pleasures of drinking alcohol, beer, the pleasures of pornography. That thing just interests them. And they cannot go without the pleasures of this life. The pleasures of drinking, smoking something that will put them on high. The pleasures of this life, whatever the pleasure is, because of that temptation, they bear no fruit to perfection. I pray it will not happen to you. I'm looking at 1 Timothy chapter 6. Reading from verse 9. First Timothy chapter 6. Reading from verse 9. But they that will be rich. The people that say, I look at that person. We came out of school the same year. Look at where he is. And look at the kind of car he's riding. Because of that they say, I will be rich. Look at this woman. Retired from office the same time. What has she done? Why is she making it like this? Now, I'm going to concentrate quality time. I'm going to have what she has. Look at this professional person. And we came out of, you know, the professional training at the same time. Look at what they have. Look at what they are riding. And look at the places they can easily travel to. Whatever happens, I will be there. The people that will be rich, by all means, by whatever means, it says they fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful laws which drown men in destruction and perdition. That's what drown when somebody is in the river. 
too deep for his height, too wide for his strength, and too dangerous for his little wisdom. And he's drowning, and the people cannot come to hell because they do not know how to swim to the point they can help the drowning man. He drowns in the sea. He drowns in the ocean. His life comes to an end. And there are people, they are not drowning in the sea. They are drowning in destruction and perdition. They've gone so far. They've gone so low. They've gone so wide. They've got all these connections. They've committed themselves in their, in their pursuit of riches. And now, how can they come out? They've discovered this sin will lead to covenant of the devil with darkness. And they have said, I will give this. If you give me this, their life is already now given to the hands of the devil because they'll be rich by all means. We're not only talking about people in the world, we're talking about people even on the pulpit. They want a large crowd. And they want many people to be following after them. They want to have a name, a name on earth that that religious clergy, that Christian preacher is up there. And would you know how they go in secret? And then they sell their souls and they sell their future and they sell their destiny into the hands of the devil. Do it for me. Do it for me. Whatever. Whatever. If we do it for you, you will die at this age. What does that matter? If I have what I'm looking for, Give me something big that before I go, people will never stop talking about me. And because they want to be rich in a kind of, a, you know, profession of religion. And so they sell themselves, they drown, they drown in perdition and destruction. Look at verse 10. Verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have edged from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. It will not happen to you. It must not happen to you. You're on your way to heaven. Don't be sidetracked, looking here, looking there, how to get this, how to grab that. Heaven is enough for you. The glory of heaven, the beauty of heaven, the enjoyment of heaven, that's enough. Don't allow anything of this mundane world to sidetrack you. You will not perish by the wayside. We're coming to point number three here. Point number three, the promised price, the promised reward, the promised crown for tried beneficiaries in endless triumph. We're coming to uh, James chapter 1. We're reading from verse 12. Blessed is the man. That man is here tonight. That woman is here tonight. Blessed is the man that endure temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. The Lord has promised to us that love him will not miss it in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, reversing the cravings of thoughtless and trampled beasts. There are beasts, there are men, but their passion is like the passion of the beast. There are men or women, the desire, their drive is like the desire and the drive 
of the beast we need to reverse that by grace you reverse it in jesus name number two renewing the consecration of trusted and uh, tested believers number three receiving the crown of the tried triumphant bride number one in number one reversing the cravings of thoughtless trampled beasts in jude chapter one only one chapter there jude one verse ten but these speak evil of those things which they know not but what they know naturally as brute beasts it's talking about people because it talks about speaking evil of those things they know not and what they know naturally is okay about people as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves the things they know they corrupt themselves the knowledge they have they corrupt themselves the experiences they have they corrupt themselves the contacts they have with the world they corrupt themselves the things they possess they use them to corrupt themselves look at verse 11 in verse 11 woe unto them for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for a word and perished in the gain saying of Corey. Look at verse 12. These are sports in your feasts of charity. They mingle, they mix with the people, children of God, charitable people of God. But again, children of God converted children of God and the sanctified holy children of God they mingle in our midst but they have another heart they have another mind and when they have the chance they speak evil of leadership they speak evil of the dignitaries they speak evil of the things they know and the ones they don't know instead of saying i don't know they speak evil of those things it says they go in the way of cain Korah, balaam and then it goes on to say their sports in a feast of charity when they feast with you feeding themselves without fear clouds they are without water carried about of weeds trees whose fruit withereth without fruit twice dead plucked up by roots in verse 13 verse 13 reaching waves of the sea for me in out their own shame have you found that somebody is supposed to be a believer and then when he gets talking for me in out uncontrollably the dirty things in his heart the suspicions in his heart and the kind of corruption that is stored inside him you see in a, Hold it now. Be quiet now. It's senseless. It cannot control. Once it starts forming out all those things, there's no end to it. Not born again. If it was born again before, it's not gone back. It's dead again in trespasses and in sins. Twice dead. He was dead. He became born again. He was quickened, saved. Then he backslid again, dead again. The second time, terrible. Twice dead. No fruit. No joy. No evidence of salvation. Reaching waves of the sea. The temper. The anger. 
the things that come out as the eyes bulge out in anger you say but it's supposed to be a christian it's supposed to be a believer no grace gone completely and it says it's foaming out it's on shame and it's like wandering star to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever that will not be my portion the lord help all of us total change transformation like great children of god there's nothing to form out anymore we don't have a religious satanic epilepsy just some religious uh, satanic epilepsy those are the people that form out form out form out and then after they you know done all the foaming out they become so ashamed they don't know what they're going to do again we're coming to number number two here number two is renewing the consecration of tested trusted believers we come back to the lord and we renew our consecration completely unto the lord philippians chapter 3 we're reading from verse 7 in philippians chapter 3 looking at verse 7 but what things were gained to me those i counted loss for christ the the kind of things a believer has that in the unbelieving days, I can talk myself into taking anything, getting anything from anybody. Those things that were gained to me, I count them now lost. A man that can, you know, no matter the woman, her beauty, her position, her status, I have this knack, I have this gift. I can talk her to anything, to my gain. The things that were gained to me, I count them now as loss. The woman that would say, it's only if I don't want him. If I want him, I can get him. I just have that natural talent. And no matter how reserved they are, how guarded they are. If I want to get him, that's, that's me, that's my gain. When you become a believer, the consecration we have, and that's why we don't fall into temptations, we now regard them as dung and dross. It says, the things, what things were gained to me, those I counted lost, for Christ, the one that will say, if I want to get money from anybody, anybody, I have that ability to talk them into it. And the way I position myself and tell them the lies I want to tell them, they cannot shake it up. It will be too good for them to miss. That's the gain you had in the world. Now you come to Christ. The consecration we have now is that deliberately we give up all those things. What things were gained to me? Those I counted laws for Christ. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, ye doubtless, and I count all things but laws. Why? For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but down that I may win Christ. Look at the next verse there verse 9 it says and be found in him not having my own righteousness, not having my own a kind of degraded gift I've been using. And it says, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And in verse 10, 
that I may know him. Saved, I know him. I want to know him of sanctification. That I may know him. I know him as the sanctifier. I want to know him more. I want to know him as the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. I know him and baptize. I want to know him as the giver of the gifts of the Spirit. I know him. I want to know him more as the power of God in man. I know him. I want to know him as my giver, as my supplier, as the one that makes me steadfast, even in the most dangerous situation, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. Verse 14, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We're renewing a consecration every time. We're reversing the cravings of the flesh and we're concentrated on him. Number three, number three, we're looking at receiving the crown of tried triumphant bride. Receiving the crown. You receive a crown. You will wear the crown. All that happens today in temptation and trial, you will overcome. And then on that day, look at the glory, look at the splendor, and look at the greatness of where the Lord will bring you to when you stand within among the angels and sanctified souls, saints in heaven. You'll be wonderful. You'll be a star shining forever and ever in Jesus' name. But you know, at this time now, we need to endure temptation. At this time now, we want to get engaged in the work of the Lord. So that when he comes, yours, mine, will be the reward in Jesus' name. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 2nd Timothy chapter 4 verse 5 but watch thou in all things watch thou in all things Pit falls there watch thou in all things and Pit holds there watch thou in all things a deed showman there watch thou in all things a tempter a temptress over there watch thou in all things and difficulties and trials and things that could easily trip anyone there watch thou in all things watch over your life Watch over your language, watch over your tongue, watch over your situations, watch over every circumstance, every situation you find yourself, watch over all those challenges and watch over whatever crisis. When a crisis comes up, watch. Don't just talk, don't just act, look before you leave. Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Are there afflictions for the evangelist? Uh-huh, yes. Endure. Are there afflictions for the believer? Endure. Are there afflictions for the soul winner? Endure. Are there afflictions for the Christian worker, for the Christian man, for the Christian woman? Watch and endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist do the work of a soul winner do the work of an harvester make full proof of thy ministry verse 6 in verse 6 for i am now ready i pray when your time comes you'll be ready uh, how can we get ready when our time comes be ready every day be ready every night be ready every time what if he comes tonight? Are there things I should make right that I have not made right? What if he comes tonight? Are there 
attitudes I bear, attitudes I wear, that I need to turn around, make it bright, make it positive, make it practical. Are there things in your life, are there things in my life that we need to say, Christ should not meet me in this condition when he comes, and he can come anytime. Because of that, be ready. He says, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He is living, this is a man living in the light. And because he was living in the light, there was no shady thing, there was no secret thing, there was no dark spot. He lived in the light of Christ every time. And because of that, he said, the light would have shown me if there was anything to be taken care of. But now, I am ready. I've been walking in the light and talking in the light and living in the light and behaving in the light and producing in the light because I walk in the light of a sunshine. He says, I'm now ready and the time of my departure is at hand. He said in verse 7, in verse 7, I have fought a good fight, not a bad fight. Fighting against Satan, that's not a bad fight. Fighting to earnestly contend for the faith was delivered unto the saints, not a bad fight. Fighting the beast at Ephesus, that's not a bad fight. Fighting all the corruption of the flesh so that you live righteously godly in this present world that's not a bad fight fighting the flesh and fighting whatever will pull you down again that's not a bad fight i fought a good fight i have i have finished my course i have kept the faith look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. When you, when you come to the end of the journey, the end of the race, and you look back and you say, by the grace of God, you received the faith, you kept for the faith, you contended for the faith, you defended the faith, you lay by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you, and you were abiding consistently constantly in that faith you didn't sleep away into unbelief now you say there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them unto all them they them are they there tonight I said, are we there tonight? And to all them that love is appearing. A crown of righteousness, a crown of life, the price and the reward of constant, consistent commitment to the Lord is waiting for every one of us. Waiting for you. Waiting for the overcomers. You'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord himself will help you. In all the circumstances and situations, you might find yourself that the Lord will help you. You have to be sure of your salvation. Be born again. Repentance. You've left the path of sin. You've left the way of sin. You've left the practice of sin. You've left all those pollutions, all those pleasures of the flesh. You have confessed, you have repented, and you have said, Lord, I need forgiveness, I need salvation. Make sure that salvation is still intact. Talk to the Lord. Do you know the day you got saved? you know how you got saved? 
You know what the grace of God, you remember what the grace of God did in your life. When you got saved, remember, recollect, thank God for that. If you can't remember, get serious before the Lord. Repent of whatever is causing the doubt. Am I saved? Am I not saved? Remember, recall, recollect. Bring yourself to God unreservedly. Everyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This can be the day. Delivered from sin. This can be the day. When we're saved, our mind, our heart, our intention, our attention, everything is on the Lord. We live for the Lord. We don't live for people. Whether they are there or not, our commitment is unto the Lord. However lowly we are in this world, we don't allow the loneliness to make us sin or do anything contrary to the grace of God abiding in us. We know but he gives us grace, the riches of his grace, he grants unto us. Anywhere we are, we know we're the children of God. We have the Holy Spirit guiding, leading, witnessing within us. We know that we are heirs together with him. Heirs together with Christ because we are now children of God and we know whatever we need we don't have to get into temptation to get anything we ask we seek we knock at the door and he always opens to us and we know we have a place in heaven. What lifted to sit in heavenly places where Christ he has exalted us. And we're truly consecrated, committed believers. And it preserves us profitably in the kingdom of God. Temptations come and we do not yield like in the old days of sinfulness. By grace, we have reversed all those cravings of the world. You're no more falling and rising, falling and rising. 
a person like that will be lost forever. Christ comes anytime. Happens to be the time he has fallen again. No steadfastness. No consistency. That will show the abiding grace of God in his life. Now you can resist the devil. Christ, the overcomer, lives on the inside of you. And you have overcome them, little children. For greater is he that is in you than he, the tempter that is in the world. Don't allow concentration on the things of this world to make you a fool in eternity. Crying had I known. Weeping had I known. Don't allow the pool of the world, the pool of riches, the pool of the flesh to drag you down, down until you drown in destruction and perdition. Come away, come out, stand firm. Be totally given permanently unto the Lord. Renew your consecration. The consecration of the good old days. Renew the consecration. And you will receive the crown of life. Don't take your eyes away from the crown, your mind away from the crown. Here, something good is waiting for you every day as you stay with the Lord, steadfast in the Lord. And there on the other side, the crown of righteousness, the crown of life, the crown of glory waiting for you. You will not miss your crown in Jesus' name. You will not miss your place in heaven in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Father, thank you for your children. Thank you for our brothers and sisters. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you for their desire to keep on serving you until the very end. Help their decision. Help their desire. Help their devotion. And grant them grace that will match every challenge of their lives in Jesus' name. Make them stand. Make them steadfast. They will not look back. They will not fall. And when temptations come from any direction, in any way, the grace and the strength and the power to stand and to overcome, give everyone in Jesus' name. No one who has heard your words today will be lost eventually. Life in every life. Light in every life. The love of God in every heart. 
And Lord, every day, whatever comes each day, will live victoriously, steadfastly, righteously, godly, graciously, in Jesus' name. And if there are needs in any life that the devil is trying to capitalize on, I'll give you this, I'll give you this. Lord, I pray this very day, solve the problems of your people in Jesus' name. And always give everyone, my brother there, my sister there, always give everyone what they ask of you to make them live satisfactorily in Jesus' name. The strength of God abide in your life. The goodness of God abide in your life. And the joy of salvation never leave you in Jesus' name. You will continue until the end. And at last, God will bring you to that place. You'll have the crown of life. The crown of righteousness. And the crown of glory. Your expectation here, your expectation hereafter will not be cut short. Fulfill your good desires on all your children, Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.
In Jesus' name we pray. We are grateful unto you this night for bringing us together for the Bible study. We pray, dear Lord, that you will reveal your word to us tonight in Jesus' name. You bless us through this Bible study that our life as believers will be better after the study tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answers to prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Can I have your seat? Praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes as we pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful unto you for this evening. Thank you for the privilege to be in your house, to study your word, to know your mind, and to receive grace to do. I'm asking and praying tonight that your word will come fresh and life to everyone in Jesus' name. At the end of the meeting tonight, everyone will have enough grace to obey and do your word in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Lift up Jesus is King of Kings. Lift up Jesus is Lord of Lords. Lift up Jesus is King of Kings, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let us lift him up. Oh yes, is King of Kings. Lift up Jesus is Lord of Lords. Lift up Jesus. Let us lift him up, lift up Jesus, is King of Kings. Is King of Kings, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name, O Lord, O Lord. O Lord, O Lord. Name, O Lord, O Lord. O Lord. How excellent is your name, O Lord, O Lord. O Lord, I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. His mercies and compassion. Praise the Lord, I have seen the Lord's goodness, mercies and compassion. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, O oh Lord, you have. In my life, O oh Lord, you have. Excellent in our lives. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. What about you? His mercies and compassion. O 
Oh, I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, you have. Oh, Lord, you are. To me, oh, Lord, you are excellent in the light. I am rejoicing that Jesus conquered the world. Oh, I am rejoicing. I am rejoicing. I am rejoicing that Jesus conquered the world. Oh, I am rejoicing. Praise the Lord. What about you? That Jesus conquered the world, yes. I am rejoicing. I am rejoicing that Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. I am rejoicing that Jesus conquered. The world I am rejoicing. Oh, I am rejoicing that Jesus conquered the world. I am rejoicing, I am rejoicing, I am rejoicing that Jesus conquered the world. Oh, I am rejoicing, praise the Lord, what about you? I am rejoicing that Jesus conquered the world. Praise the Lord. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that Liveth, but Christ that liveth in me, in me, yes, in me. Oh, yes, Jesus is the life. Oh, it is no longer I. Oh yes, it is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me, in me. Oh yes, in me. Jesus is the life. Oh, yes, it is no longer I that live. I am running the race to meet my Redeemer. I am running the race to meet my Redeemer. Heavenly race, heavenly race, heavenly race to meet my Redeemer, my Redeemer, to meet my Redeemer. What about you? To meet my Redeemer, heavenly race.
I am running the race to meet my Redeemer. I am running the race to meet my Redeemer. Heavenly race, heavenly race, heavenly race to meet my Redeemer, my Redeemer. Heavenly race to meet my Redeemer. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. I am ready to obey. I am ready to obey what about you my eyes oh lord hallelujah hallelujah i am ready to obey yes to obey open my eyes oh lord open my eyes oh lord open my eyes oh lord i am ready to obey i am ready to obey what about you hallelujah oh lord hallelujah humble thyself and the lord will draw near thee Humble thyself, and his presence will cheer thee. He will not walk with the proud or the scornful. Humble thyself to walk with God. Amen. You're welcome to the Monday Bible study this night in Jesus' name. We want to specially welcome you Bible study. We want to request that you should raise up your hand wherever you are seated. You are joining us for the first time. Please could you raise up your hands wherever you are seated? And if, if you are raising up your hand, could you also stand up on your feet for pastor's recognition? You are welcome in Jesus' name. A pastor, the man of God, the GS, is delighted that you are here with us this night. And you want me to tell you to continue to come, that as God has used him to be a blessing to a multitude of us, the Lord also will use him to be a blessing unto you in Jesus' name. The ushers are very close to you. They will give you a slip of paper. You collect it from them and supply all the needed information in capital letter. And after which, you return the slip back to the ushers. You can have your seat. Congregational song. Our congregational song will be taken from 
GHX number 253. GHS number 253.